so I want to talk to you guys about something that's really crazy that you probably haven't seen before, while also simultaneously bringing a music stand to the center of the stage. All right, so talk about this thing called music, right? There's going to be a slideshow that's going to pop up any minute now with some music on it. Um, earlier today, I played a piece by Johann Sebastian Bach, who I'm sure most of you have heard of before. Um, the piece is in standard notation. Most of you are probably familiar with this concept. You have a staff, those are the lines. You have notes, you have a time signature, you have a key signature, all sorts of exciting things like that. Those tell the performer what to do. Don't get me wrong, we definitely have to bring artistic interpretation into it. Otherwise, we would hire Christian to make computers play that music, and, <laughs> and artists would never get jobs. Um, what? Okay, so anyways. <laughs> All right. So before standard notation existed, there was the oral tradition of spreading music between people. You know, all of the people that we imagined just wore, you know, loincloths and gather around the fires would sing together, and it was really beautiful. Um, after that, Gregorian chant in Europe, pneumatic notation was invented. That was basically little symbols over words that would tell you how the melody is supposed to go. Then we fast forward quite a long time into the Renaissance. We start seeing things that look kind of like this. We had rounded note heads. And then by the end of the 17th century, there were bar lines, actual bar lines. I don't have a slide. Can we go to the next slide? Awesome. So I'm going to talk about the new way of looking at music. Um, next slide. <laughs> During the 20th century, composers started to get really crazy ideas that they did not really know how to convey to the performers. And this was a problem. So basically, they stripped away all of those things that I talked to you about before that told the performer exactly what to do in a really obvious way, and they created things that look like this. This is weird, right? Like, some musicians even now are like, I don't know what to do with that. What do you want me to do? Those are squares and numbers. Um, this is the way the composer wanted to communicate a certain idea to the performer. There are things in graphic notation, and most graphic notation looks very different from any other piece of graphic notation. Um, but there are some similarities. You have lines, colors, shapes, things like that. Um, next slide. The piece that I'm going to be playing today is this. Oh, yes, hmm. I've showed this to a lot of my musician friends and they kind of scoffed. They were like, what is, that's a, that's a colored pencil thing. And I'm like, no, I will convince you that this is a piece of music. Here's the story. There's a fantastic woman named Viola Yip that I met this summer in Italy in Macagno in this incredible contemporary chamber festival called Soundscape, where basically a bunch of people who want to make music like this get together, composers, musicians. We premiere works for the first time in the whole entire world. It's awesome. Um, this piece Viola was working on while she was at Soundscape. So one day I march into the casa and Viola's like, hey Katrina, how would you interpret this score? And I said, okay. What are the rules? <laughs> and she said, start in the top left-hand corner. I said, OK, um, I'll start on the green ball. I think I'd take that blue line up and over that curve, kind of get on that orange sideways hill a little bit. And we went on. And she said, oh, that's cool. Right. So we fast forward to when I got an email asking me to perform at TED. And I'm like, I, I don't have any ridiculously cool musical ideas to tell anyone. I just really like to play. I really like chamber music. but. What, what do you want from me? And I thought back to viola, and I thought most people probably have not seen something like this before. And you probably haven't heard a lot of classical guitar. People think guitar is like Taylor Swift. <laughs> I get excited when I talk. Um, I'm not Taylor Swift, though. I really like to see what the guitar can do with classical music. So I played Bach, and that is one of my favorite pieces to play. But now I want to play this for you. Let me tell you the path that I'm going to take. So everyone, follow with your eyes so that you know that I'm not BSing while I'm performing so you can see where the interpretations are coming from. We're going to start on the green circle. We're going to go down the orange line, underneath the blue, over to the very top of the blue. You'll hear things get very high and kind of chaotic at that point. Then we're going to go down over the orange hill, kind of in the yellow space. And then we're going to curve down in between the pink and the green lines. I think of that as kind of going down, but also like a resistance. Like I'm trying to go to the side, but I'm also going down at the same time. Meanwhile, trying to evoke some sort of whatever about the colors. Um, we'll make our way into the yellow area, which I think looks like outer space. I mean, those look like planets to me. So we'll hear like round sounds, like the circles. 
all the way till the end on the left hand side to the very teeny tiny circles. You'll hear those hopefully, if nothing else. And then down into what I think is kind of chaotic, that blue green area. Uh, Viola did not write this to have a specific amount of time. However, I have one minute and nine seconds to make it happen. So, here we go. One minute and one second. One minute, okay.